which brought a worried Peter May out to bat and a storm of applause for Alan Davidson. Mackay of Queensland bowls to May. If England ever needed a captain's innings from him, it was now. Three wickets had tumbled for seven runs. Harsh facts for a skipper who wasn't all that comfortable himself in the early stages of his innings. His was a classic fighting knock, and here's a sample of the work he was to give the Australian fieldsman before this day was out. Slowly, very slowly, the score was mounting after a calamitous start. Bailey was picking up some runs here and there, and seemed to be revelling in the sort of situation in which he so often found himself. By lunch, he and May had put on 48, but the board still didn't make very happy reading for England. Three for 28 was Davidson's booty so far, and his figures suffer somewhat just after the interval, when a beautiful square cut by May sends the batsman racing through for three. The temperature had now soared into the 80s, and the crowd to 50,000, as we find May awaiting a new over from his Australian opposite number. Captain takes a single off Captain, a most grudgingly conceded single, and the score is creeping along. Both batsmen seem to be set for a big partnership, and Benno found little response from the pitch to his spinners. He's about to come in for some punishment at the hands of Bailey, who really gets on to that one, and far out in the country, there's some work for Mackay. This was a vastly different Bailey from the Bailey of Brisbane, and there goes a repeat dose, a real scorcher which could end up nowhere but the fence. <laughs> Benno now has something to ponder. These two batsmen were making a bold bid to pull the game around. They've already added 72, which became 76 with a Bailey sweep to leg, and the only man who needed to do any running was Queensland's Ken Mackay. One can merely conjecture about what May was saying to Bailey and what Bailey was saying to May, but clearly they had reason to be pleased with England's recovery so far. At this point, Benno decided to call on Mekif, the speedster whose bowling action caused quite a controversy this season. May apparently reddishes his return to the attack and sends Klein away in vain pursuit. Then Richie Benno tries again, the batsman Bailey, who hands out some further vigorous treatment. <laughs> Melbourne enjoyed what it was seeing, liked the brand of strokes which May and his partner were turning on. Runs were now flowing steadily from both bats as England continued to recover from her early setbacks. So Mekif to Bailey, and the Essex all-rounder goes on to within two of his half-century. This was the first time that television had ever taken a test match into Australian homes, and the telecast began in good time for the next flurry of excitement. Here it comes now. Benno holds the catch, and Bailey's fine innings is finished. With May, Bailey had helped to put on 85 sorely needed runs, and the C is for Cowdery, who made a century in the Melbourne test on the previous tour. The advent of this great Kent batsman means that both the England captain and vice captain are in together. And we concentrate for a moment on Peter May and the crashing drive which brings up his 50. <laughs> Runs are coming freely both from spinners and the pace men. Peter May has seldom been in better touch and has an effective answer to everything that's bowled. He and Cowdery are the last of the recognised batsmen and they're stepping up the tempo. Cowdery has made 10, and the board shows they've already put on 32. Then, for the first time this match, Benno brings Klein into the firing line, and England's captain, helped by the agile Cowdery, sends it speeding off to the boundary. A tired but a pretty happy Peter May can take solace in the fact that since lunch, England has added 73 precious runs and this single makes it 74 for the loss of only one wicket. Four for 129, England's position on this first day as they make ready to resume after the tea break. 
The Australian captain decides to persevere with his spinners and May's reply is a May classic. Red boundary prompts Benno to tighten his bowling and May weather the remainder of a particularly good over. In all, May was playing a safe yet enterprising innings, first with Bailey, now with Cowdery, who faces up to Davidson. The Kent batsman picks up some runs, and the chase is Norman O'Neill's concern. There's a zest to Cowdery's batting, which shows he's nearing the form expected of him. That four took him to 17, took Jim Burke to the boundary, and brought Sydney's Alan Davidson running in again. Cowdery sees some runs in it, and proceeds to get them. That made the May Cowdery stand worth 52. A bowling chain sees the left arm spinners of Klein given the May treatment. It netted three runs both for him and for England. With the end of the day in sight, the main point of interest was whether the England captain would go for the runs in an effort to get his century before stumps. Neither Klein nor Benno got much response from the Melbourne wicket, which was said to be the best prepared there since the war. Both batsmen went back into their shells during the closing minutes of play. There were still some hoping for a breakthrough, but the day was ending on a fairly quiet note, with May still going along nicely, yet making no attempt to hurry on to his century. That, obviously now, would have to wait, to the disappointment of those who had stayed on. Play was over for the day, and both May and Cowdery remained unbeaten. Alan Davidson's spell of inspired bowling was among the highlights of a day which ended with England well back into the picture, four for 173 at stumps on the first day. The film story of the second test match continues next morning with Klein getting some early punishment at the hands of Cowdery. This day, New Year's Day, 1959, saw Colin Cowdery turning on his best performance of the tour so far. This was his second boundary from successive balls, and Melbourne was liking it. Klein's partner in spin, Benno, could do little to curb them, and this single to May took the England captain to 98. The chilly day, meanwhile, is nowhere matched the lusty warmth of Cowdery's mood, and the score goes merrily ahead. This was a moment of cricket history. The bowler is Klein, the batsman May. And there's no mistaking it, Peter May has just become the first English captain to notch up a century in Australia for more than 50 years. A comforting sight for England after such a disastrous start, and there seems no holding May now. Power and impeccable timing sent another ball racing off to the fence. That takes the score past 200 and brings Ian Meckiff back into the attack, bowling with a new ball. But May is in splendid form and gets one away to square leg for a couple. But a magnificent innings is about to end. Meckiff bowls to May. Peter May had batted for five hours in knocking up his third century in tests against Australia, a truly fighting innings.